All right, boys and girls, what's up? Your boy BQ here with your impact review for August 8th, 2024. I know we're doing this review late. I've been really, really good about a long, you know, for a while now of doing them on Saturdays, Sundays. So I'm sorry that I'm dropping this on a Monday evening. I'm going to be honest, I had the most, one of the most, if not the most stressful weekend of my life. Um, I was, I, I know people say shit like this. I really did not sleep for 48 hours. And I think I only slept about three hours over the course of 72. So I mentioned last on last week's show, because I totally slept through last week's episode with you guys. I was super tired. Um, and I, I let you guys know that in general, I don't sleep. I just, I take two naps. One in the morning and one in the evening. And I'm always up. You know what I mean? Um, getting shit done, getting shit accomplished. I'm one of those like I'll sleep when I'm dead type of people, but I also look forward to when I can rest. And uh I had a, a, a super stressful weekend with my uh with my business and uh just freaking out about a lot of stuff. Everything that everything that could have gone wrong went wrong over the course of about three days. So when I barely sleep and I miss a nap because I got something going on, then shit gets real, real freaking ugly. But I just had a um, a real long, really long weekend, and I mean this when I say that I forgot to eat for twenty four hours for forty eight hours. I really did not consume meal, so I don't recommend that kind of a uh, lifestyle for anybody. <laughs> I'm looking forward to tonight actually getting a full night's sleep. So I've been a uh, today I started uh being on active duty for the rest of the year basically so because i'm doing that i can actually sleep like a normal person for a while so looking forward to that but yeah neither here nor there i know i'm always like so so vague with everything i say with my personal life i just don't like getting into uh my new details about stuff because I'm, I'm private but just give you this uh i don't tell you what i do my job my business what i do in the military i don't say shit <laughs> I don't tell anybody anything. So anyway, so let's get into this episode here. Um, the main announcement or the main part of the episode, the, the big talking point was that Bound for Glory is going to be in Detroit, Michigan this year. So I've got a lot of interest in going to that. I have never visited Michigan. Um, I'm one of those people that I think every state has its own charm. I don't believe there's any shitholes in the United States. You know, someone will say, oh, th this piece of shit city and this piece of shit. I don't feel like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I think everywhere has charm. I, I, lo I love to visit um, states that normally people wouldn't have interest in visiting, even though I think they said Bound for Glory is at a top top five most visited, visited uh, city in the world. I don't think Detroit falls in. I'm just going to go on a limb and say Detroit does not fall into that category uh, i know that bound for glory they were talking about the rumor was the uk right and i told you guys because a lot of people were asking me what well, why is there no date why is there no venue and this and this and this and i had asked the question several months ago and you know was basically given the answer that a lot has changed when you're trying to choose venues and you're negotiating sometimes the people you deal with they leave and now you're dealing with someone totally new um venues you know venue availability is a thing so i just know there was a lot of factors that went into it where things they just couldn't lock it down you know so i don't have much else to say about it um i have interest in going i gotta see if it lines up with my personal schedule or not but uh, i would like to go very much too bound for glory. So, oh, uh, they've been to Michigan before. They've done pretty decently in Michigan, and it's close to Windsor too. So, I'm real interested in, um, real interested in in going. That's all I got to say. Uh, I, I had a laugh because I listened to my guy Mike do Brace for Impact, and when I found out about Detroit, when I do my podcast, do I have much to say about this? That's all. Sorry, I think 
I think we had a, uh, a connection cut out there for a sec. But um, I was like, I think I can wrap up what I have to say in five minutes. And I was like, if I know Mike Gilbert, he's going to talk about Bound for Glory in Detroit for like 25 minutes. And uh, I played Brace for Impact when I left the house on my way to work. And uh, he stopped talking about Detroit when I pulled into the parking lot 25 minutes later. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to my guy. So, Detroit, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, would love to, love to get out there. So, we'll see what happens with that. All right. So, uh, oh, I don't, you know, you know, I don't talk about news a whole lot. For my podcast, but I caught some clips about Scott Demore or from Scott Demore on Busted Open Radio talking about TNA and finding out two days before he was fired. I don't remember my exact conversation, but he knew. <laughs> he knew well in advance. I think he did allude to it, saying that he saw the writing on the wall. But um, from what I understood, my conversation, he had known for a very long time. It's just that he wanted to see see his vision through. So maybe he was um, in denial a little bit. That That's very much a possibility. But uh, I, I was glad that he didn't talk shit about the company or anything like that. Like that was my that was my first thought when he talks about his, his dismissal from TNA that he was going to talk trash. But I, I will say I'm pretty sure he was aware of his, his firing well in advance. And what I try to communicate to you guys, which what was communicated to me, is that you don't fire people who are doing a good job. So, but the wrestlers like him. Uh, I wish him well. And he's got the Maple Leaf Pro show coming. And uh, I think I might watch it. I might review it. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Let's do this. One time for your mind. Episode of Impact. They uh, they removed the piss yellow filter. Thank God. I shouldn't say they did. It was There was about 10% of it on there. Um, you can only see it from certain, I don't want to say certain camera angles. There was just, it just depended on what was going on on screen. Sometimes you could tell, but it wasn't like the last couple episodes where you have your best crowd in a while. And then the show looks like crap because of the way that they're editing it. But Tampa really came through for TNA. I know they've done Tampa before for the life of me. I don't remember how those tapings did. I thought this was the best looking episode crowd wise. I thought I thought it was better than uh than the last set in Canada. Just because the venue and the seating and the way I th I thought it looked incredible. Uh, I, I thought this was the most engaged we've heard a crowd on an episode of Impact in a really long time. I don't know what they did because for the most part they can travel in the United States and get a few hundred people, but I mean this was people showed up for this. And the fans really showed out. It was um, it was an enjoyable episode to watch from that standpoint. Uh, the, the fans brought a lot of energy to it. And um, yeah, fuck. Good for you. Good for you, Tampa. So the show kicks off with Steph DeLander in a hotel room. I mean, it kicks off with and, and all that. But then um, with good old Matt Raywall and Tom Hannafin, yo, I meant to bring this up last week before we talk about Steph Delander here. I meant to bring this up last week. There was an a, a, a match on last week's episode. I don't remember what was going on. I don't remember who was in it. But Tom Hannafin starts like laughing hysterically for a good like 30 seconds. Just <laughs> and he's like really busting up too. It wasn't even fake. This chuckle fuck and like he he's he's laughing and he's <laughs> and a kick out. Like he he stopped laughing to say and a kick out. I was like, this motherfucker loves that phrase. And I know where it comes from because in WWE they would say to call the pinfalls. And I think that's a wrestling rule in general. Look at me telling him how to do his job when I don't know jack shit. But you're supposed to call the pin attempt, not that's what you're supposed to, no matter what's going on. Oh, what, what? Cover, you know what I'm saying? Lateral press. No matter what you're talking about, and if there's a pin attempt, you're supposed to call that. You don't have to force Call in the kick out because we already saw him kick out. You're When you call the kick out, you're just emphasizing what we just saw. It's not necessary every single fucking time. You got to call the pin, but you don't have to stop what you're doing if you're promoting something whatever the case the 
I am a kick out. Anyway, Steph DeLander. So um, after this sham of a fucking wedding, I'm all for a wedding angle. Wedding angles are, don't bother me that much. But this one was so, <laughs> I thought, so fucking poorly done. So, so rushed. They haven't even slept together. And they're married. They haven't even kissed. We've seen all their interaction, okay, on TV. There was no rendezvous during the week when Impact wasn't being recorded. We have seen the entire relationship play out in front of us, and it's lasted about six weeks. Well, the relationship has lasted like like two and a half weeks, but I mean, this whole storyline has been about six weeks from like, I mean, it went from zero to 100, and these two are freaking married. Um, but yeah, she's she's got her lingerie talking about black or red, and they've got cameras, they've got music. I mean, they're documenting this whole thing. The, we we're gonna get the live sex show like Edge and Lita. So um the system kicks off the show. Didn't really say anything I had a lot of interest in, other than uh Mike challenges Mike Santana. I mean Mike Moose challenges Mike Santana, and of course the episode is next week on Impact. Like God forbid um that we build some real heat here and, and at least drag it to a TNA plus show. Um, and then Moose says he wants to win his world title back. G. A. Miller go, is backstage interviewing Jonathan Gresham, who does not have an octopus mask. He's just a cheesing son of a bitch. And uh, this is the gift that gives, keeps on giving. I feel like this this feud is going to go on forever. It didn't happen at Slammiversary, so they made sure we got it. Because if they say we're going to get something, we get it. I'm actually shocked that they haven't forced the um, Hammerstone and Jake something match since uh, ha Hammerstone disappeared for a while there. I'm surprised they didn't give us that one. But usually if they say you're going to get something, you're going to fucking get it. So um, Kushida enters the frame. And the minute Kushida steps on, he is completely covering Gia Miller. And she is from head to toe in a black shadow. You can't see her face, her expression. Nothing. So two weeks ago, the backstage interview with Gia Miller looked good. Last week, it started getting bad again, and now we're back to dark black shadows because we don't know how to do lighting properly. Trent Seven, pounds overweight. Cheeseball Mike Bailey. and Naked Jake. Jake nothing. Have a three-way match. So they are doing uh, qualifier matches for Ultimate X at Emergence, not Bound for Glory, Emergence. When I saw this graphic, I messaged Mike Gilbert. I said, why is Cheeseball in a qualifier match for the Ultimate X? He said, well, he said he what I don't know what the hell he said. You already know. He he got he cut the interview with G or whatever, and he wanted to prove whatever i didn't fucking care what he said but i told mike i said are they going the fucking fighting champion gimmick again i said everyone they're all these are all fighting champions nick nemeth jordan grace cheese ball you know josh alexander was once upon a time every baby face champion that tna has even when Eddie was Ed, Edwards was a champion, both both of his runs, it's always I'm going to be a fighting champion. That is the most boring way to push a champion in the world. It usually covers up for people who can't cut a promo, but it just means we're just going to get about a bunch of fucking matches and no stories and no rhyme or reason, and everyone gets a title shot. You just say, "Hey, can I wrestle for the belt?" And you get a shot at the title. And there's just a complete lack of story. And, and the baby, baby faces are totally boring. You know, Jordan Grace has been a fighting champion all year. Nick Nemeth, first promo. Pro, uh, first promo, I'm a fighting champion. Cheeseball, first promo, I'm a fighting champion. <sighs> oh, my God. Put me to sleep already. I'm, I'm looking to fall asleep. I'm looking to sleep, folks. Keep it, keep it up with this fucking fighting champion babyface shit. Anyway, so Cheeseball, Trent, seven pounds overweight, and Jake something have a match. 
Is there any wrestler in wrestling right now with less aura than Jake something? Aura like the young kids say. I mean, talk about a wrestler who people like. Like, this is not con. This isn't big con. You know what I mean? Talk about someone that everyone likes, wants to see pushed, thinks he can be a star, thinks he can be world champ, maybe at least X division champ, but be presented in such an uncool manner. At least these other two come out with with ring and you know some kind of robe and a cheese ball, a headband, and all that. At least they come up with something. Trent number seven with a coke has the towel, something. And then it's like, and a third participant, Jake something. I mean, everything is plain about this dude. I didn't have a lot of interest in this match because I knew Mike Bailey was going to win. Multi-person X Division matches are not usually my thing because we're just getting a bunch of pre-rehearsed spots. So we knew that Cheeseball Mike Bailey was going to win this, and he did. Not only is he a fighting champion, he is a talking champion. Because this fool is talking entirely too much for my liking on these episodes. He, he said to whatever, I don't know, it was Gia Santino, I don't even know. He was talking about wanting to be in this match. And then he's talking, he chases ABC down later. I'm like, now, so now we're a talking champion. Okay. I guess we're going to get a lot of Mike Bailey, Bailey uh, promos coming up here soon. What's interesting is that, remember Jake something cut the promo that he promised he would be X Division champion this year? That's why I said I thought he was going to beat Mustafa Ali. I thought that's where they were going to go with it. There's there's no way this motherfucker is winning the X Division championship this year. No way. They teased during the, um, man, what match? The, the three-way with Zach Wentz and the two jabrones that they started talking option C. If they're talking about option C, someone's going to cap cash in option C. So um, that's probably how they're going to get the title off Mike Bailey at some point. you know. But there's no way Jake something went in the X Division Championship this year. This year is damn near over on the TNA calendar. What do we have next? Man, there's a lot of highlights showing Mike Bailey. We got uh, Tasha Steele's little clip of her defeating defeating Giselle Shaw. Giselle Shaw, this is on explosion. She's pissed. She, Giselle Shaw was a heel three weeks ago. And she's mad at Tasha Steeles for um for getting the heel victory. So I guess they're gonna wrestle next week and then Tasha Steeles will disappear for two months um, until they need her to to wrestle again. So I have interest in this because I, I like both girls. So we will see. I thought that Giselle Shaw, I thought they were building her towards eventually beating Jordan Grace. I no longer think that's the case. I think that they're either going to have Ash by Elegance beat her or she's going to do an open challenge at Bound for Glory and lose there. Hammerstone approaches Santino. This is the fucking Santino show. This motherfucker must have been on four segments at least. All he was doing was moving around to different spots in the building with different colored lights behind him. He he's on this show like Scott Demore was. I mean, this dude is this dude is fucking everywhere. Hammerstone walks up and he wants to be in the sex division. Quali- he wants to get into a qualifier. That gives Santino a chance to tote one of the company lines of it's not about weight limits, it's no limits. So we're going to get Hammerstone in this thing. He's going to win his qualifier, trust me. Who the, who's going to beat him? Eric Young walks in the frame, and it looks like we're going to get the gift that keeps on giving between those two people, those two as well. And they're just going to keep uh, wrestling until Eric Young needs to give another rah-rah speech. Kushida took on Jonathan Gresham. To me, this was kind of boring, um, but it was just the style. You know, I can appreciate that. Uh, I can appreciate the match that they put together. It was just a little slow in plotting. The fans weren't really into it. And then Jonathan Gresham ended up tapping out like nothing. So I don't know if this feud is a gift that keeps on giving as well, or they're just they're just ending this. It's possible. John, I mean, is Jonathan Gresham gone? <laughs> because I mean, why why do you just abruptly? Oh, I'm not the octopus, and then 
this taps out. Probably jumping at con- conclusions, but maybe it's just a story. Maybe it's a story. Well, so we'll see. This was a bad gimmick for him. It got off to a great start. The vignettes, the look, and then the ink happened, and then it went downhill. And the referees had to wear masks, but the wrestlers didn't have to wear masks. And he was getting people sick. They were still letting him wrestle. It's very strange. Next, after Gresham taps to the hoverboard lock, we're getting ABC. They cut a little promo. They are this close to saying that they are going to be fighting champions. This close before Cheeseball Mike Bailey walks in, asks them to uh, to get involved in a qualifier. He walks away, and they said that's what caused problems to begin with, meaning we're going to go back to them having problems again. And that is not a storyline that most people had interest in. Steph Delander is in the hot tub. She's calling PCO. His voicemail was was pretty funny, uh, yelling or whatever, because that's what he does. That's what PCO does. Yell, loud noise ads. Jordan Grace open challenge. This was answered by rosemary um i like rosemary i like jordan so i was um i was down to watch this match rosemary's doing some really good things right now the best work she has done in a long time i wouldn't have put her in a title match i just don't like champions i wish the champions wrestled like twice a year that's that's how bq gets down I wish it was like when I was a kid and Hulk Hogan would wrestle tops three times a year. Top tops four times, I should say. But this match was uh was pretty good for a while till Ash by Elegance came down. And I'm not even gonna call her Ash by Awful Sauce because she did not come down to in comedy. She looked pissed off. The personal concierge came out pissed off. He wasn't being a goof. And I think that Ash has a lot of comedy about her right now. And this was you know, this was maybe 5% comedy, her cracking a smile, but this was not bad comedy like they've been doing with her for several months. So we got a no contest. That just means that we're going to get a three-way at Emergence or whatever the hell the show's called that we got coming up. I always do that to you guys. Whatever, whatever show is coming on TNA+, Plus, I'm just always like, whatever. Whatever the match is or whatever the show is. But yeah, I, I just... um. I wouldn't have just thrown Rosemary into a title match at this point. That was just kind of odd for me. Excuse me, I got a yard. Whoo, hello. Oh, let me get a drink real quick. Next, we hear from Josh Alexander. Boys and girls, girls and boys, I think this was my favorite part of the show. He has been extremely boring, extremely bland. We forget that Josh Alexander was a heel for a long time as part of the North. He is very natural in this role. The promo was long, but I thought it was very, very good. Very well thought. He was playing off with the fans and was coming off natural. And I, I like the premise of this. I like the story. Like He used to be the face. You would have been chanting, walking weapon. You know what I'm saying? Like I liked his shirt. They really got to work on his presentation. You know, presentation is everything, folks. Same with freaking Jake something, who I already spoke of. Do you know who my favorite wrestler in WWE was for years? Fucking Dean Ambrose. You know who my least favorite wrestler is in all of professional wrestling? John Moxley. Same person, different presentations. You know what I'm saying? When I when I watch AEW really hard, my uh, favorite wrestler was Ten from the Dark Order. I know it's really random, but he was. And I saw that he's wrestling on. Uh, I saw the graphic of wrestling on Collision against Roosh. I said, "This motherfucker's still alive." I mean, you take the mask off, you change your presentation. Now he's just a dude, like Jake something. He's just a dude. He's just a guy. He's just a naked guy. Naked Jake, baby. Presentation means a lot. So I really enjoyed Josh Alexander's promo here. And then Nick Nameth comes down. Sober kick. Kicks his head off. 
I counted during uh, Jordan Grace and Rosemary how many times Tom Hannafin was going to say, Arr! and uh, he was at about five before I stopped counting. And a kick out. So, yeah, ne Nemeth comes in, delivers a super kick. Josh Alexander should not be knocked on his ass under any circumstances at this point, but that's what they're going to do. Then they announced the, they finally announced Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory, we already talked about that a little bit in Detroit at the Wayne State University Fieldhouse. Hopefully, I can make it. Sunday's kind of one of my admin days for my business. And I, I mean, I can kind of do it uh, away from home, but if I left my wife to handle things, she would be pretty pissed at me. So I just got to figure out a way to, to make it about for glory and, and for it to, to mesh with my, my personal schedule. So, uh, Oh yeah, I guess I forgot to say when Nick Nemeth kicked his head off the, he said that Josh Alexander could have a match. So what kind of fucking monthly special do we have going on? next episode that we're getting moose versus santana nemeth versus alexander they just want to get this alexander title match out of the way but that's the problem with these fighting champions they just fight anybody they can be in a storyline not in a storyline there's just going to be no storyline that comes from it because it's just fucking wrestling matches that they do and when you're a fighting champion you start wrestle so I guess we're getting Nick Nemeth versus Josh. Josh called Nick Nemeth a transitional champion, which very well could be true. But I don't think Josh is going to win here. It would be shocking if he did. That would be incredible. I don't think he's going to, though. But yeah, it seems like we're getting a really big episode next week. And Santino made it official. Frankie Kazari and just so happens to be there, walks, walks up. He is the king of TNA, folks. I don't know if you know this or not. He is the king. He is down with the king. Where's Kenny King, man? I miss Kenny King. If you hadn't uh, heard when I said it months ago, I saw him at the grocery store a few months ago. Just at Albertsons. Just, just shopping like I was. Then we got Zach Wentz versus Casey Navarro versus Dante Chen. I watched about two seconds of this match. It kicked off with a bunch of pre-rehearsed wrestling moves. And I said, can we just get to Zach Wentz winning this match? And that is what happened. And, and they tried to play off that he was very distraught about Wesley kicking Trey Miguel's head off. Even though he did not appear to be distraught, it appeared perfectly fine. But I think, I don't know, I, I would imagine Casey Navarro is from this area because that seems to be when they bring him on. I was joking that since Bound for Glory is in Detroit, that pretty much all but guarantees that Allison Kay and Rohit Raju were going to do jobs on the tapings. So I'm going to have to see if they uh, plan on being there. A those are my two closest wrestling fan, uh, res wrestling friends. Not saying we're close, close, close. I'm just saying they're the, the probably the ones that I'm closest to. So Zach Wentz wins, obviously. Uh, I guess this Chen guy is from NXT. Good for him. Then Steph DeLander is in a hotel, gets a text, PCO saying, I'm almost here. And then he the door, someone knocks at the door about two seconds later. Why would you text if you're at the door? Steph DeLander. She's the one that says, Oh, he's he's on his way. Oh, he's here. Do you does does anybody else text on their way up to the front door and then knock? So Matt Cardona and someone else, I don't know if they showed us who it was. I couldn't see who it was. I know that much. They attacked PCO to music and camera angles from all over the place. And uh, we're going to get that feud. Then Joe Hendry in the main event against Wolfgang. He looks like someone, and I can't quite place it, someone who's not a wrestler. Just can't place it. Joe Hendry is super over with this crowd. I've said that I do think he should not talk before every single match because you face the problem that the New Day face once upon a time, that um, the Acclaim face in AEW. What I mean is 
when you have some sort of gimmick, you're singing, you're rapping, you're talking, whatever, you're being entertaining, you're under pressure to outdo yourself the following week. And once you start, so you stop being able to outdo yourself, then you just get boring. But right now we're enjoying it. He is um, a very over with the crowd, like I said. Joe Hendry obviously won this match. What else is there to say? And then afterwards, it shows the system and Santana being uh, held back by security because they want to go at it. Why wait to next week when we can do this right now? Man, I forgot to say, I meant to say about Josh Alexander. I couldn't believe he did the You People promo, though. As good as, good as he was doing, he had to hit us with the You People. We're just getting all the cookie cutter shit. You people, uh, fighting champion, we're, we're getting it all. So that's all I've got for you guys. I, I, I said I slept through last week's episode. I was pretty tired through this one as well. I only half slept walk through it. But uh, I am going to wrap it up there because it is uh, about 10 p.m. my time. And I'm, I am good for uh, going to sleep now and um, hopefully not waking up too early. I am your boy, BQ. I am out. Peace. Thanks for swinging by as always. I'm out.